Alright, so in this next module, I'm going to be giving an overview of the submission process. Uh, after this module, there are three modules that follow that are me interviewing longtime journal editors, and they're going to tell you a lot more about the publication process. So I'm just sort of setting it up and then listen to them for more advice and tips. So how does the submission process work? So um, the very first step, uh, you need to hopefully even before you start writing your manuscript, you need to identify the journal that you're going to be submitting to. Um, and that is a, a whole art in itself. You need to spend a lot of time thinking about what is the appropriate journal. Um, of course, everybody wants to submit to the most prestigious journals, but that's not always the right fit for your article. You have to figure out really who is the audience that's going to care about my data. And it may not be the most prestigious journal. It may be a more niche journal where that audience really does care. You've got something that's really significant for a particular audience. So spend some time, uh, you know, especially if you're junior, talk with some more senior people about what journal is really the appropriate journal for your submission. You want to aim high, um, but, you know, be realistic about where um, your paper belongs. And you want to identify that journal pretty early on in the writing process because every journal has its own specific instructions for authors and you might as well write the journal from the very beginning, format it, have everything in the form that that journal wants from the get-go. So that's the first step and that's hopefully happening before you write the manuscript. The second step is to go online to that journal, all journals will have online now an instructions for authors page where they give you very detailed tips for how to write and format the manuscript. How many references are allowed if there's a limit? How, how should those references be formatted? How should tables and figures be formatted? And uh, when I interviewed George Lundberg in an upcoming module, he uh, mentions many times uh, how important it is to follow those instructors. If instructions, um, if an editor sees that you haven't followed them, you know they, they feel like you, you didn't really care enough, um, and they, they question whether or not uh, you know you you are detail oriented enough in your science if you can't even follow instructions for authors in your uh, your paper submission. So so pay attention to that. Write the um, again find those instructions before you write and format the paper so that you can do all that from the get-go. Then once you've written your paper and you've had all of your authors read it and edit it and you've got a final version, if you're the corresponding author, then um, you're going to be the one submitting the manuscript online. So that usually the corresponding author is either the first author, um, you know, again, often a graduate student who did the groundwork and wrote up the draft of the paper, or sometimes the senior author will be the corresponding author. But assuming that you're the corresponding author, then you're going to be the one going through and submitting your manuscript online. And it is, uh, it is so great nowadays that all of the journals have online submission systems. Because way back when, when I was in graduate school, uh, it was the it was pre the era of online submission, and we still had to go and copy the papers. You had to make multiple copies of your papers, put them in an envelope, send them in snail mail. Months later, you'd get a, a letter back in snail mail. It was just a much less efficient process. Um, so being able to submit the manuscript online is just is just huge. So uh, you go online. There's a, a series of steps that these systems will walk you through. Um, leave a couple of hours. It usually it takes a couple of hours to enter all the information, so leave yourself a couple of hours. Uh, the, that's all done online. Um, the one thing that's not uh, usually done online is, again, all the authors must fill out these specific forms that each journal has. So uh, usually that's done offline. And again, you need to leave some time, if you've got multiple authors, for collecting those signatures. Uh, you may need to follow up with authors and make sure that they get those uh, forms in. All right, so you've submitted your manuscript. Now what happens? So uh, the next thing that happens is within, sometimes you'll hear back in a week, sometimes it might be you know, as much as two months. But you're going to get a letter back uh, from the editor of the journal. And there's generally one of four categories your paper has got, is going to have been put in. Um, you might get the paper accepted outright with no changes. Well, that hardly ever happens, as uh, you'll hear when I talk to the journal editors in the upcoming module. So, so that's a very weird case. That's usually only going to happen when the paper was something that an editor solicited ahead of time. So when you're just sending in a manuscript cold, it's very unlikely that it's just going to get accepted outright. 
There's another category, accepted pending minor revisions. That one also doesn't happen that often. Um, I've had several letters to the editor accepted with just minor revisions, but that's, again, a different kind of paper. Um, for original research manuscripts, it's not usually the case that the editor is going to accept it right away with only minor revisions. So um, papers that are eventually published in journals usually go through this third category. So almost all the papers that you see in print will actually have been rejected at first, but would have been allowed the opportunity for resubmission. So there's this re, uh, revise and resubmit category that all journals have. And when you get the letter back uh, telling you that you've, your paper has been put in this category, uh, especially if you're a first-time author, you will go, oh my gosh, it sounds terrible. You feel like you've been rejected because it says you've been rejected. Uh, but you have to read the fine print because if you're allowed resubmission, if they're inviting you to revise and resubmit your paper, that's actually a positive outcome. So the very first uh, uh, you know paper I ever submitted, I got this letter back in the you know again in the snail mail um, that said the paper you know was rejected, and I was like, oh you know I guess my paper was rejected. But I showed the letter to somebody more senior, and they said, no, 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 this is actually a good outcome. Because if you read further in the letter, it says that they are, would allow you to revise and resubmit. So that means that they actually think that the paper will be publishable, or is, is likely to be publishable down the road, if you can address the concerns of the reviewers. And um, again, most papers that end up in the published literature have gone through this step. That is, they have gone through at least one round of revision and resubmission. Journal editors want you to have to go through a round of revision to make sure that the paper has been thoroughly vetted um, and that the paper is as good as it can be. So, so that's really what you're aiming for when you submit an original research manuscript. You're aiming for that reject but resubmit category. So it, it sounds a little negative, but in fact it's actually a pretty positive category. And we'll talk more about uh, that process of resubmission in a minute. And then the final category is you may get an outright rejection. And they say that, you know, they give you no opportunity to resubmit. And of course, this is the category that you don't want to be in. Um, but uh, sometimes the rejection has really nothing to do with the paper itself. Um, you might get a rejection very quickly from an editor who just simply realizes that the paper is not a good fit for their journal. So don't feel bad about that. That just means you targeted the wrong journal and you're just going to turn around and send it to a more appropriate journal. So that will happen sometimes, that the editor won't even send it out for review. They'll just kind of look at it and say, you know what, this isn't significant enough uh, for our journal uh, or, you know, for a wide enough audience that our journal targets, or it's not the, you know, it's not a good fit because of who, who our audience is. So that means you've just, you've, you haven't sent it to the right journal. So be thankful that they just send it back without sending it for review. You have an opportunity to send it elsewhere. So that's one possibility. You also might have a paper that's sent out for review. It's vetted by a number of reviewers. Uh, and the editor looks at the critiques of the reviewers and decides that um, there's too many major problems with the paper, that it's not going to be, it's not likely to be acceptable after revision. And they will send you back those critiques and say, sorry, you know, we, we can't um, publish it and they don't offer you the resubmission. So that happens. Um, again, don't feel too badly about it because there's always, you know, there's lots of reasons that papers get uh, rejected. Uh, that means that you're going to have to turn it around and um, send it elsewhere. Um, the thing to keep in mind is you will be tempted to just send it as is elsewhere. That is, you will be tempted. You're going to get the reviewer comments back with that review. And you're going to be tempted to ignore those reviewers' comments and just say, I'm just going to send the paper as is with no work somewhere else. Don't do that. Make sure that you read through those reviewers' comments, even though you don't have to respond to them. You read through them and figure out the problems in your paper and revise it before you send it somewhere else. Because likely, if you send it somewhere else, the same problems are going to pop up again. So use that as an opportunity to make the paper better and increase your chances of getting it published elsewhere. All right, that revision and resubmission step, I'm going to talk about this in great detail in a minute, but basically you're going to have to resubmit with a detailed letter that addresses the reviewer's critiques point by point, where you address every single critique the reviewers have brought up. So this is where you have the opportunity uh, to get the paper published down the road. Um, you make sure that you address each of those re reviewers' critiques in great detail. That doesn't mean you have to make all the changes they request, but you need to, if you don't make a change that they requested, you need to say why you didn't make that change. 
if you um, get to revise and resubmit, it is not guaranteed that that paper is going to get published in that journal. So you really need to make sure that you adequately address those reviewers' critiques if you want to eventually get published in that journal. Um, I have seen papers go back also for multiple rounds of revision and resubmission. So just realize that you uh, might do one round of revisions and that may not be adequate. You may have to do yet another round. And I've seen papers go for as many as four rounds of revision and resubmission. So try to address all the reviewers' critiques as best you can early on so it doesn't have to go through too many rounds like that. And then hopefully your paper will get accepted. Uh, congratulations once it's accepted. Um, the last step that you'll have to do is before the paper is published, the, uh, the, um, jet, the journal will put together a final proof. They're going to format the paper in the journal style. They're going to put the tables and figures in the journal style. They're going to send you some final proofs. Make sure you look at those carefully because it is almost always the case that small errors get introduced in that formatting and layout process. And you want to catch those. You don't want things published that are incorrect. I've also caught um, just silly mistakes um, in the proofs uh, and, and managed to catch them before they went to publication. So make sure you review those proofs very carefully. All right, that reject but resubmission category. Again, it, it, it feels pretty bad when you get that letter, but and, uh, you've got to remind yourself that this is a good outcome. This is the outcome you're actually um, shooting for with the first uh, submission of the paper. So it will say something like, your manuscript is not acceptable for publication. It's very negative. Uh, but if you keep reading, it'll say something like, however, if you feel that you can suitably address the reviewer's comments, then I invite you to revise and resubmit your manuscript. So again, that's a positive. That means that they're interested in the paper. And all you've got to do is you've got to address the reviewer's concerns. But that means the editor thinks that, it, that your paper can be publishable if you do address those concerns. So take that as a positive. And then you're going to prepare that detailed response to the reviewers. So, you know, be polite. Uh, again, um, you know, uh, the review process is meant to make your paper better, and ultimately it usually does. So, um, you know, we appreciate your helpful comments. Be polite, and those of the reviewers thank the reviewers. We feel that the manuscript is now greatly improved. Um, when you first get that set of criticisms from the reviewers, it won't be your first uh, instinct uh, to be polite and uh, courteous and thank them. Uh, usually, most of us respond to criticisms defensively. So it's, it's everybody's sort of natural instinct when you get a bunch of criticisms about your paper to get defensive. Um, it's natural. We, we all do it. So, um, you know, on a first draft of your response to your reviewers, you, you know, you might find yourself writing, well, the reviewers just don't know the literature, you know, and, and being too defensive and your tone being too negative. So make sure that you go back and, you know, make that tone more positive. The reviewers are volunteering their time. They are trying to help you make your paper better. Uh, and ultimately, um, they usually do make your pa paper better. Uh, and it's interesting because, um, you know, sometimes the reviewers are off the mark. That is, they don't quite identify the flaw in your paper correctly. They'll get it wrong. But what's really interesting is even when they get it wrong, they usually identify some other flaw. It leads to you figuring out that there's a different flaw. So, for example, they might think you did your analysis wrong. But it's not that you did your analysis wrong, it's just that you explained it uh, poorly. You, you weren't clear in your writing. So you figure out where the problem is in your manuscript, even if the reviewers didn't pinpoint the right problem. By them raising an issue, it usually leads to you finding something that was wrong in the paper and that needs to be fixed. So just realize that uh, we had a situation where um, we screwed up on the numbering of some references. And the way that was found is that one of the reviewers was talking about the literature in the area and and that reviewer was wrong they had the literature mixed up and i was you know my temptation at first was to say well this you know this reviewer just doesn't know the literature clearly they're you know they're ignorant um you know of course that was my first instinct uh, but as i looked carefully what i realized is that the reason that they were quoting the literature wrong was because we had uh numbered our references incorrectly and they were using uh our numberings they, they were fine you know uh, inferring you know, they were talking about the references as, as we had numbered them. So we'd pointed out that we had misnumbered our references. So even though they didn't get the, they, they didn't identify the actual mistake we had, it led to me finding that mistake and, and thankfully fixing that before it went into publication. Um, and you're going to address each comment point by point. 
with numbers. So uh, it will say like, uh, the reviewer one said there's little discussion of X. So you respond very specifically. We agree with reviewers one and maybe also two that the section on X was too abbreviated. Therefore, we have added a paragraph that highlights this and then you point out the specific paragraph. So you're going to address every comment very specifically. If it's a small thing that the reviewer is asking you to change, go ahead and change it. If it's something you really don't want to change, that you really disagree and you think the reviewers got it wrong, again, reviewers often get things wrong. Uh, but to explain to the reviewer why you're not making that change. Explain to them um, why you've decided not to take their recommendation and explain that carefully to them. So you don't have to make every change they request, but you do have to explain why you're not making a change if you choose not to. Uh, could you comment on X? Well, we've added a sentence to paragraph 9. Be very specific about where it is in the methods and materials section that comments on X. So every single uh, comment that they've brought up, you've got to respond to it uh, directly either where you made the change or why you didn't make the change. And uh, most uh, journals also want you to include a copy of the paper with the changes tracked. This is really helpful for editors and reviewers so that they can go back and see exactly where you made those changes because they like to verify, I like to verify when I'm re-reviewing a paper that the changes that I asked for and that the authors say they've made that those were actually made and I like to see those. So uh, uh, highlighted with uh, changes tracked is very helpful and usually is required by most um, journal uh, uh, journals. Um, and then finally, um, as I was preparing these lectures, uh, I uh, was looking at this book, Guidebook to uh, Better Medical Writing, and he uh, said something in, in, interesting in it. Um, and you know, he didn't have any citation for this, so I'm not really sure where this, where this statistic came from, but it really resonates with me. So um, he says about 60% of reviewers' criticisms, criticisms pertain to the quality of the writing or the tables and graphs, and only about 40% pertain to the quality of the scientific work. And, you know, so again, the, uh, the importance of the writing and presentation of the data is really huge in, in the publication process. And, and this really resonates with me. Again, I don't know where he got those numbers from, but I would say that it's very, uh, it's true for me that um, probably more than half of the time, the comments that I'm making do have to do with problems with the writing and problems with the data presentation, as opposed to any real methodological problems in the scientific work. So again, if you want to get published, the good writing and the good data presentation can really help you. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.